Today we are starting our introduction on earthquakes for our new unit. And it started with a kind of a neat picture. It shows an earthquake, I think this was in Japan, and it shows how this elevated highway was destroyed by an earthquake. And it's things like this that we're going to talk about kind of the, in the, at the end of the unit is, okay, we know earthquakes are bad, we're going to learn what causes them. Now maybe we can talk, start talking about what can we do to prevent the damage from them. So I like kind of starting with this picture to show kind of where we're leading to um, at the end of the unit. But we're starting with very basics. We're starting with earthquakes kind of in history. Here is a very old um, painting of an earthquake in Italy, in St. Francis of Assisi. So people have been experiencing earthquakes for as long as people have been on Earth. Many different cultures have created earthquake legends. Well, why did they make up legends and stories? Why didn't they just explain earthquakes the way that we're going to explain them, with plate tectonics? Well, kind of a simple answer, they didn't have the knowledge to explain them scientifically. So they explained them the only way they knew how, whether it was gods or just other legends or stories. Remember, plate tectonics that we talked about last unit or the unit before, um, that didn't really get you know come into understanding until the 1970s. So prior to the 1970s, we had different ways to explain earthquakes. And one of the ways that people used was legends. And then I like just looking at some of the legends because we can learn a lot about the history, beliefs, and culture of the people that created them. So I have lots of earthquake legends that we can look at, and I think we're just going to look at maybe four of them. And then in class, if you want to look at more, if you want to um, you know, look at my PowerPoint, download my PowerPoint, and look at the other legends, you can certainly do that too. Um, one close by, we're going to look at Mexico. El Diablo, the devil, makes giant rips in the earth from the inside. He and his devilish friends use the cracks when they want to come and stir up trouble on the earth. So certainly earthquakes are kind of bad things. The devil is the one that's causing them. Um, so pretty bad things. Maybe not as bad as what, when the earthquakes were in Central America. The square earth is held up as four corners by four gods, the Vashakman. When they decide the earth is becoming overpopulated, they tip it to get rid of surplus people. So a little bit different than the Mexico story. This one is very much, you know, very bad story. We have overpopulation. We're calling people surplus people, not a term we'd usually use to describe people. Must have been very deadly earthquakes. Also, you can look at it and you see, okay, they tip it to get rid of surplus people. Well, what does that mean? It's kind of a weird saying. Maybe it means that there was a tsunami and the waves came up and, and swept people away so it would look like the earth was tipped. Uh, I don't know, but it's kind of interesting reading different little legends like this and trying to figure out you know, the, what was behind this legend. So we compare this one, very, very bad legend, to the one in Assam. There's a race of people living inside the earth. From time to time, they shake the ground to find out if anyone is still living on the surface. When children feel a quake, they shout, alive, alive, so that people inside the earth will know that they are there and stop the shaking. Earthquakes are not bad things here. They're checking on us. They're making sure that we're still alive, making sure that we're okay. So you think of the history, well, they probably had earthquakes, but they weren't very bad earthquakes. People didn't associate them with death. We go to another one, kind of maybe our last one is the classic one of Japan. You see in this, in this, I think it was a wood print here, there's a giant catfish. And the islands of Japan are resting on the back of the catfish. When the catfish moves, it causes earthquakes. So there's this demigod, Demijon, and he holds a heavy stone on the catfish's head to keep him from moving. Sometimes when he gets distracted, the catfish can move, and the earth trembles, making the earthquake. Okay, kind of an interesting story, and we'll see this idea of a catfish underneath islands in some of the other um, Asian, kind of off the Asian coast. But kind of what's interesting about this is you look here and look at the people that are praying. They're not really people at all. They're actually little catfish. Well, why would the little catfish be praying to the human to put, put this big pivot stone on top of the catfish's head? kind of interesting. We have some ideas about that. If you want to 
ask me about them in class, we can go through kind of the history of why um, that might happen. And there are certainly other legends, like I said, you can play around with them and look at other ones. Uh, some of them are pretty interesting. Tennessee one is kind of interesting, rooted a little bit in history, maybe. Um, it's kind of neat, and you can look at more of those. But let's get back on to our notes. We're not wasting too much time just reading funny stories. So why should we study earthquakes? Well, there are lots of reasons. First one is prediction and warning. It'd be great if we could know when these earthquakes are going to happen and be ready for them. We want to reduce the deaths and damage from them. We can learn more about the structure of the Earth from earthquakes. Earthquakes happen all the time, so it's just good to know about them. And most people will be affected by them in their lifetime. So we want to know about them, so we know what's happening, how to prepare for them, everything like that. So we're going to go through some of these things really quickly. First thing, uh, we're not going to really spend much time on because we did it in our plate tectonics unit. Remember, we used earthquake waves to figure out what the internal structure of the Earth looked like. We were able to figure out the outer core is liquid, the inner core is solid, what it's made of, based on how these earthquake waves um, refracted and also by the speed of which they went through the Earth. We had these different shadow zones, so we could tell what the Earth was made out of. Another, another picture showing this idea, and we can see, remember, that we can see that there were convection cells in the asthenosphere using these earthquake waves. There are lots of earthquakes, so it's good to study about them. We haven't learned magnitude yet, because it was our first day, but we'll talk about magnitude. Magnitude 8s are bad, really, really bad. Only about two of those a year. Magnitude 7, weak buildings destroyed, about 20 per year. Magnitude 6, cracked walls, 120 a year. Magnitude 5, as you can see, 3,000, 4s, 15,000, 3s, 100,000. Magnitude 4 is really when they start getting pretty significant. Even if you're a really heavy sleeper, you'll probably be woken up by magnitude 4. Um, the 3 is, you might not be. So if you think just magnitude 4 is enough, that's a lot of earthquakes a year. So it's something we should definitely study and be aware of and know how they work and see what we can do about them. There are approximately 325 earthquakes that can be easily felt every day throughout the world. If we also include the magnitude 1s and 2s, there will be about 10 earthquakes every minute. So there's earthquakes happening all the time. Okay, well, they happen in other places, right? I mean, for the most part. But look at some of these death totals. This first one um, is sometimes disputed, so you won't always see this first one listed in, in largest death tolls from earthquakes or other natural disasters, but there is some evidence that might support this number. That in the year 1201, in Egypt and Syria, there was a horrible earthquake killed over a million people. Again, long time ago, we don't have the best data uh, to know if it's actually true. The second one, though, we know is true. The Chinese kept very accurate records. Um, so even if this is our number one most deadly, it's still amazing. In 1556, in Shanxi, China, 833,000 people died from the earthquake. This one, not, very that, or not that far long ago, 1976, in Tangshan, China, 655,000 people died. We have some in India, India, Syria, Egypt, China again, Iran again, China again. This one in Sumatra not very long ago, about 220,000. 2010, very recently, in Haiti, 230,000 people. We have Japan, Iran again, Italy, uh, another one in China. So you really see that kind of China and the Middle East are where the most deadly earthquakes are. And we'll talk about why later in the year. But there are tons of deaths. So we definitely want to learn about earthquakes. Okay, what about the ones closer to home, the largest earthquakes in the United States? Normally people think of California, San Francisco. Well, biggest one was a 9.2 magnitude in Alaska. Second biggest one, also in Alaska. Third biggest, Alaska. Fourth biggest, Alaska. Fifth biggest, we finally have one that isn't in Alaska. But it's not in California. It's in Missouri. It's an 8.1 magnitude. So we need to talk about earthquakes and figure out, well, how, why is there one in Missouri? That doesn't seem to make sense. When we talked about our plate boundaries, Missouri was not a plate boundary. So why are there earthquakes there? So we want to study earthquakes to figure that out. Next one, of course, we have Alaska. Alaska again. Oh, another one in Missouri. Still not in California. Another one in Alaska. 
finally we get one in California, Fort Tejan. Not San Francisco, but it is in California. 7.9, a lot weaker than the 9.2. Okay, what if we don't look at Alaska, take that out, let's look at the continuous United States. We see Missouri, Missouri, the Fort Tejan, California. The next one, another one in Missouri. Another one in California. Finally, we get one in San Francisco, the 1906 earthquake. A very, very bad earthquake. A lot of people do that one for their earthquake project. Uh, some people do new, new matter, but not as many. The Alaskan one, 1964 Alaskan one, some people do that for their earthquake project as well. Then we get another one in California. We get one in the Cascades in Washington, California, Oregon coast. Then we get one in Charleston, South Carolina. Again, it doesn't really make sense. Why would there be one in South Carolina? Again, that's the reason why we probably want to study earthquakes. We need to figure out what's going on and understand them. Well, what about the largest one in Texas? We don't have them in Texas. Well, we do have them in Texas. The largest one was not that large. It was only a 5.8. But again, 5.8 is pretty significant. Crumbled a lot of buildings in 1931. Valentine, Texas, by the way, is, is, is down here in the corner, kind of by Big Bend National Park. Uh, Dallas is way up here. Um, so you would, have been, you would have felt it, Dallas. It would have been a Mercalli scale 2 or 3. Again, you don't know what that means yet. Um, we'll look at that scale, though coming up and you'll do an activity with that scale. So we do have them in Texas even. So you see that no matter where you go in the U.S., there is definitely some risk. Now if you go southern Texas here, eh, probably not much risk, or Florida, not much risk, and the upper Midwest, not much risk. But a lot of places there is. You know, certainly anywhere on the west coast, there's definitely a risk. On the east coast, there's actually a pretty good risk too. And in the middle of the country, around Missouri, there's maybe a risk too. So You'll probably be going, whether it's off to college or just traveling, you'll be in an area where you could experience an earthquake. So it's good to know what to do. And we'll talk about that in this unit. In the future, there's most likely going to be lots of earthquakes too. This chart just shows you um, going up to 2018, some of the predictions. They're saying that the Parkfield area, pretty much 100% probability that there'll be a large earthquake. Going down to Los Angeles area, maybe it's a little less, 20%, maybe up to 50%. San Francisco, maybe 50% or 20%, a little bit lower. But most likely there are going to, there is going to be another major earthquake in California. So we want to know about them. That's kind of it for our introduction. We'll get on to our earthquake notes here in the next video.